Hi everyone, welcome to this quick walkthrough of my recent digital forensic project using Scalp on Kali Linux. In this project, I successfully recovered a deleted file, created a forensic image and ensured the integrity of the recovered data using cryptographic hashing. Let's dive into the details and explore how each step was carried out. Okay, here my goal here was to recover a deleted file from a Linux environment using a tool called Scalp, which is a which is great for file curving. Now, file curving is a technique used in digital forensics to recover files by scanning the raw data of a disk for known patterns like file headers and footers. I specifically focused on recovering a deleted file named README. After recovering it. I created a forensic disk image and verified its integrity with hash value. First thing first, you need to make sure the environment is ready. Since I was using Kali Linux, Scalp is already or was already uh, available, but if you don't have it, install it. It is straightforward with a simple command. Once it's installed, I created a, work, a working directory to store all the recovered files. I coded a digital forensic incidents response, therefore stand for DFID. And inside that, I, I would store the forensic output. And then to recover the deleted file, I needed to know exactly where to look. So I identified the partition that held the deleted file using the df negative h and uh, also you, you can either use the df negative h or the lsblk command. This allows Scalp to focus on the right part of the disk for the data recovery process. And then next I needed to tell Scalp what to look for. In this case, we are recovering a text base file, so I edited the scalp configuration file to include text file types, ensuring, ensuring it will scan for files like readme.md. This configuration step is crucial because scalp uses file patterns in its search, and by customizing the config, we make sure that it is looking for the right data. Now. With everything in place, I run scalp on the partition the, with pseudo scalp neg uh, slash dev slash sda1 negative o. Also remember to put space and then my, my direction of the file. You can name your file whatever you want. This is where the magic happens. And also a disclaimer, make sure that you know where your, your lost data is. Mine was in the Delft SDA1. So this is where the magic happens. As I said, Scalp scans the raw data on the petition and attempts to recover files that match the patterns uh, which I said in the configuration. After it's configured, uh, uh, config, uh, what, after it's finished scanning, I checked the output directory and there it was readme, but I didn't get it as the readme. I think it was overwritten as I did this project, I think five times. So somewhere, somehow it got overwritten and I kept on deleting and recurring to retrieve. And oh yeah, successfully recovered, but not as the name, <laughs> but still successfully recovered. Once the file is recovered, I created a forensic image of the recovered file. In forensic, it is important to preserve evidence in a way that is that it remains unaltered. So I used the dd command to create a bit for bit copy of the recovered files. Uh, this forensic image is a snapshot of data at the moment it was recovered, ensuring no changes can be uh, made afterwards. Finally, I created a cryptographic hash value to ensure the integrity of the forensic image. I used both MD5 and SHA-256 hashing algorithm to generate this unique fingerprint for the data. This way, if anyone ever checks the forensic image later, we can verify that it is it has not been tampered with. This hash value is essential for confirming that the data remain, it remains unchanged, which is a critical part of forensic inf uh, investigation. So therefore, say, so therefore, you have it, a complete digital forensic with workflow using Scalp on Kali Linux, from repairing the data file to creating a forensic image and everything 
and verifying actually data integrity. This project shows the powerful tool and technique used in modern digital forensic. If you are interested in learning more about the steps or trying this out yourself, I've written a detailed guide on Medium and also on GitHub, and I'm also going to share the documentation on LinkedIn. All the codes and configuration are available on my GitHub, my documentation, and also on Medium. Be sure to check those out and please follow and comment and tell me what you think. Ah, thank you so much for listening and also watching. And I hope you're going to try it out and let me know how it goes. You can also recover more than just the MD. This was like a practical that I did since I'm currently busy with my domain on digital forensic on the security blue team. So I thought, why not do it? So do it as well. Bye.